Hello and welcome back. Have you ever thought about exploding a spaceship when you were little? Those that you made out of Legos? Well, now you can. Stay tuned and watch how I turn this spaceship into this. First of all, I highly recommend you to download Lego Digital Designer since it allows you to create what is any type of Lego machine. You can use blueprints or create your own in this world. So go to the main website and download the free product. I'm going to leave the link down below. Okay, so once you got your model, create a geometry and import it. How do you import it? With an Alembic. Remember that you can export this to Blender as an FPX and then re-export it back as an Alembic. The only thing you got to do is to look for the file. Once you load your Alembic, this is what you are going to have. Everything is going to be packed inside the Alembic, so you need to unpack it in order to make any um, process on top of it. Now I got 2.3 million polygons. This is a lot and we are not going to simulate this. However, we need to create the names, as always, of the RBD. So, create a connectivity. Remember, this is the workflow I use. I think it's the most efficient and it will work perfectly for you. So now, make these primitives. I always have a, a name tag here. You can save it with the save preset and save the, the preset, obviously. And remember, to, this has to be in primitives. So, this can be set to piece. And if we go to primitives, we will have the class and the piece. Everything sticks to it. So we have uh, 41,000 pieces. Now, what's the problem with this? If we want to simulate this, this is going to take a huge load of time. This is not going to be efficient. So we need to reduce this. One thing that I like to make is to blast a piece. I will blast this piece out and I will look at it like this. So what is going on here? Why do I do this? The reason why I do this is because I want to process one piece and see how it looks. So I'm going to do a convex decomposition to start with. With middle mouse you can see this piece has 24,000 polygons and this piece continues on having 24,000 polygons. And, and why is that? Because we need a convert beforehand. So let's convert this polygon. See, now it changed. It went 10,000 polygons less. It's still a lot, so I'm going to add a poly reduce node. The poly reduce node basically reduces the amount of polygons. Let's go to 10%. Okay, this looks quite good. We have 2,000 polygons in this particular piece. So I think we are all right with this, and we can copy and paste this same assemble and place it here. See how we got the same, uh, we got the name. Okay, so this is, works perfectly. We're going to delete this and we will see what happens. Okay, so once we got this, we can check that the pieces aren't labeled the same. See, name is the same here and there. So we're going to pack this. RBD pack, like so. On the left side, we're going to have the high polygon count and on the right, the the proxy basically we're going to rbd unpack and inside here we are going to control where this is placed it's always good to uh, transform after an rbd pack so i'm going to place it somewhere over here okay now that we got this we can start thinking about the simulation for the simulation we're going to need the proxy out proxy we're also going to copy this for the constraints. We don't have a constraint yet, but we are going to out con and out high. So far, so good. We're going to open Adobe Network and we're going to hop in. For the RBD, as always, we need a packed object and we're going to plug in the high, I mean, the proxy. Now that we got the proxy, we need to add some gravity. If we add gravity and a reshift body solver with a ground 
and a merge like so uh, always the ground on the left side we will see that the spaceship will fall and it's actually really fast remember we used to have two million polygons now we barely have anything so this falls this is incredible it looks fine but i don't want this i want some constraints so let's create them out of this assemble we're going to do a connect add some pieces we're going to increase the radius in my case i need i want to use maximum radius and let's say 10 connections you don't need to have 10 connections but i want to have 10 connections let's create a wrangle and i have already a setup you can just copy and paste and we have the constraint tab which is all and the name which is glue and strength which is one remember to always have this wrestling uh, turn on just in case oh well now that we have this we can connect exactly this to the middle one which is the constraint and now if you go here we have the constraint moved with because of this transform node so let's hop in again and let's actually create our constraint network there we go the constraint network needs to have input the constraints obviously and we need to have something in this case we're going to use a glue and we are going to do, do the laros the laros means that we have the name of the node if we change this to glue this also changes see it appear and let's stay like this let's see how it simulates see now it's working a little bit better i like this so let's add some velocity i'm going to add some initial velocity on the x positive to let's say 40 and angular velocity on the x also to 5000 and let's see what happens let's simulate amazing so we are starting to have something really cool i really like it but this is outputting the only obviously the rvd my bad there we go it's outputting the low resolution geometry how do we get back the high resolution geometry well that's easy let's extract all the points here and let's transform pieces and we transform the pieces like so we're going to have the high resolution mesh here isn't that amazing okay so now that we got this with the attributes that we can of course transfer it as we said before just to so we have a look of uh, uh, the path and we can shade uh, based on these attributes without the need of unpacking it we can export it or shade it inside Houdini I'm going to export it so now that we got this we're going to do a ROP Alembic output I already have a preset which I'm going to open and basically is the set Ogawa, the format Ogawa. It's going to be saved on the heap folder on cache and it's going to be named after this file. So I'm going to say test3 because I already have some tests and I'm going to unpack this after the transform pieces. Why? Because I want to have visible, I want to, yeah, I want to basically have this visible the path attribute and any other attributes I have on the mesh. So let's save it. Okay, so it's saved. I am going to grab the Alembic and I'm going to open this. This is going to be on test number three, ABC. If we look at this, we have one point because this is packed. So if we unpack this, we unpack this we're going to have, sorry, we unpack we're going to see every single attribute as we saved it before which is really great for shading and you can import this on every program for example blend file import alembic abc i'm going to go to the folder chat 3 test abc you got everything here import Alembic 
and let's wait and here we got our great alembic i hope that you enjoyed the tutorial as always you can find me on discord and on twitch if you want to know more about my tutorials you can hop in into my youtube channel and subscribe leave a like and comment that always helps me to grow until next time see ya